Hello everybody, welcome back to IMSC 780 Methods of OR. And today's our uh, topic we're going to cover is the global optimization using uh, SciPy Optimized Library. <clears throat> and this lecture we're going to cover uh, some of the uh, unt, uh, exercise part in lecture 10, uh, nonlinear programming uh, part 2. Uh, we talk about global optimization, but we don't have a detailed example walk you through how exactly these problems got solved. And this is a tutorial using Python uh, SciPy library to solve, uh, give you some uh, walkthrough. And I'm going to go through this real quick without uh, giving too much detail. We do have uh, uh, another uh, designated class for nonlinear uh, programming is IMSC 9, uh, 982. Uh, you are welcome to take that class if you're interested in this type of top topic. Um, <clears throat> but here we're just going to give you an introductory uh, hands-on experience uh, on solving uh, global optimization problems, specifically this section. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Before that, we're going to introduce one of the very interesting uh, test function called egg holder. If you go to a uh, Wall Street store, you're buying eggs, you probably notice the, the kind of uh, uh, paper, heavy paper uh, cartoon uh, material uh, to hold the eggs as a very interesting shape. So we're going to define this function and actually the function looks like uh, it's a very famous function used for global optimization. This is the functional uh, definition. And I can define a user function, and I can define the bounds between negative uh, 512 to positive 512. The next one I want to do is I plot this function, okay? And so showing you how the function looks like, is really looks like a egg, uh, egg holder uh, <clears throat> in that range. Um, other than that, it's fairly simple, and this is uh, we just restrict the, the out, lower and upper bound area. We're trying to find the optimal solution, and, <clears throat> and first, what I'm going to uh, introduce is the so-called uh, simplicial homology uh, global optimizer, and. To, to use that very simple, just from SciPy import optimize and calling the optimize Soho give the functional uh, functional definition and give the bound which is 512 512 uh, negative to positive 512 and this is a search range. It gives you a solution and it tells you this is a, a optimal terminated and finished. Uh, optimal, uh, find the optimal solution, number of functional evaluation 47, number of iteration 2, and so on, okay? <clears throat> and here I give you a simple rundown as what is the simplicial homologic uh, global optimizer and give you a reference below. And this is a, a paper uh, in 2018, it's fairly new algorithm, and I'm glad it's implemented uh, already uh, <clears throat> in SciPy. Of course, this program was uh, <clears throat> developed in <clears throat> the algorithm development in MIT. Um, so we're going to talk uh, talk about that more later. The second algorithm we're going to deal with is a dual annealing method. This function uh, uh, is a stochastic approach using combined with a generalization of uh, classical uh, simulated annealing and also the more newer method called fast simulated annealing. Uh, simulated annealing method, uh, we talk about it in, uh, in our other OR classes as well. <clears throat> So I'm not going to go through the detail. This is the temperature functions and how to cool it down. So updated. 
So here I have a very simple using optimized dots do annealing using the function and the bound and also find optimal uh, they didn't find an optimal solution, uh, find a close to optimal solution and simulating the needing didn't have uh, have a check for uh, optimal uh, optimality. It just runs whatever number of iteration you specify. <clears throat> so number of iterations, a thousand. Okay, number of functional evaluations, uh, 4,076. And this type of method are very efficient quickly uh, solving problem. However, uh, uh, one of the limitations for this type of problem is there, uh, if the functional evaluation is too expensive, which means you have a huge or complicated objective function, and this could be time consuming. But if you, uh, the functional evaluation for your uh, objective function is <clears throat> very simple to calculate, this method is very uh, powerful. Next method we're going to introduce is called a dif uh, differential evalu uh, evol evolution, and this is another method, uh, pretty much uh, using a so-called <clears throat> genetic algorithm type of uh, uh, algorithm with the uh, combined with the gradient base technique. <clears throat> okay, so this is a version of genetic algorithm using uh, in SciPy for optimization. Yeah. Same thing. Another method we're going to introduce uh, have available as SciPy for global optimization is called Bayesian uh, Jump. It is, uh, it is a random sampling perturbation method and finds the local optimization and then, then uh, accept or reject the new coordinates based on the uh, minimized objective function value. This is more of a so-called uh, <clears throat> near, uh, nearest neighborhood method and random sampling. And it applies a so-called Monte Carlo uh, algorithm for the sampling portion. Um, <clears throat> I give you quite a bit of a references down here. Okay, quite a bit of reference down here. And these type of function are not new. Uh, <clears throat> is uh, but it's also very uh, robust. So here we have a solving both solving <clears throat> the same problem using a differential evolution or using Bayesian hopping, and I give you the solution for both. So just give you a quick rundown. These are the uh, different number of uh, different num uh, different uh, version of algorithm you can try for solving so non-convex um, type of uh, um, non-convex type of uh, optimization problem okay so finally I j just go ahead plot all the solution obtained by different algorithm and you can see that uh, from the beginning, okay, um, the yellow is the Bayesian hop, and the green is gray is the differential evolution. The white one is the uh, oh, uh, do uh, this is a do annealing method. So you can see that they find a different uh, optimal solution in different places although their objective function are fairly uh, similar. And also the uh, simplicial uh, homologic uh, method, and which is the bar sign over here. Okay, red cross over here. And the other version of a so-called using simplicial homologic uh, uh, logic method, and that the variation of that is finding all the local minima inside their sampling. Uh, this is a little bit more time consuming, but still is showing you all the local minima this algorithm can find in this range. All right, this is pretty much it for the global optimization. I show you uh, four or five different methods.
The next things we want to you um, introduce uh, the problem we want to introduce is so-called least square uh, problem. I think this type of problem uh, widely <clears throat> used in variety of engineering uh, problem, either in mechanical engineering, civil engineering, uh, for the um, <clears throat> bond, uh, concrete bond problem, uh, structure uh, rigid problem. Uh, and electrical engineer as well for signal fitting. Many times we do uh, experiment, we get an outcome from a mechanism, and we're trying to uh, approximate the system using a objective, uh, using a functional definition, using a mathematical function, either to uh, approximate the, the, the mechanism I have defined, or is trying to uh, uh, many times we find a function, but the function is too complicated, especially for the complex fl uh, fluid problem. And the objective function, uh, actually the function is very complicated. Uh, we're trying to using so-called uh, dimension reduction technique, okay? Uh, dimension reduction technique, and trying to fit the original function. And we do have a theoretic function, but it's uh, beyond uh, hard to calculate. So these type of uh, a system, uh, this square uh, <coughs> approach is using for determining how good your approximation function to the real function, or how good your uh, mathematical model fit for the real data you're getting from the experiment. So this is a reason I uh, decided to introduce uh, this type uh, type of a problem. The problem is fairly simple. Is <clears throat> one half uh, minimize one half of f of a function square because the least square we calculate the difference between uh, two value, but we're using square to make sure that uh, all the distance or the variation or the arrows are using a square arrow. Okay. We also apply a low, uh, low function. The low function is uh, how much you want to uh, reduce the inference of outlier and residue. So for example, you can eliminate certain outlier uh, beyond certain uh, threshold of uh, arrow. You decide to throw out those outlier and how much, uh, how much uh, robust, how robust your model is gonna be. And you want some, uh, the outlier still have some inferences to your least square problem, but not necessarily as important as the uh, the, the numbers or the data is actually close to the uh, true curve. So these are uh, this resolve a lot of variation. You can define your row function in a very different way, and the row function don't even have to be continuous or differentiable. And you can uh, set up a range function type of thing. The next thing is we talk about for these, uh, for the f of x, we can define their Jacobian uh, vector or matrices, depends on the dimensionality of the f. And how we're going to uh, do this. So here I give you an example, <clears throat> how to uh, example problem. This is an enzymatic uh, reaction function. Uh, so f of x uh, has a three variable, x naught, x1, x2, uh, four variable, x1, x2, and x3. So as a result, the three uh, Jacobian, which is a vector of four. Uh, so we take a first partial derivative, okay? Partial derivative for x naught, x1, x2, and with respect to s3 you get a J Jacobian vector. And the ob original objective function is this function we're trying to approximate. And the y function usually coming from directly from the experiment. So we have a dot product, uh, a dot, uh, several information outcome from experiment. And we're trying to fit through this function. So we're using the difference between those and it take a square and that give you the uh, so-called square arrow. And this we have you uh, this is with sum it up together. 
So this objective function usually defined as a sum of a square arrow type of uh, objective function. So this is a very typical uh, least square uh, uh, problems formula. And my axis decision variable was within a certain uh, lower and upper bound. <clears throat> Give you this example in Python, uh, SciPy. Define the model, which is the original objective function, and define the, <clears throat> uh, the function, which is uh, model minus y, which is my function. And so y is the real data, and define the Jacobian vector, give it store in the vector, and I give the original uh, initial uh, u and y, which is the experiment data set we get. x naught is an initial guessing for the axis. I'm calling this v square using the function, which is the objective function we have, um, Jacobian vector, and give the bound for the, my solution. The argument we ha have input is u and y. Okay. <clears throat> so u's are the parameters we use. <clears throat> and cost coefficient. Then we can solve for this. Uh, least square problem. Okay, so it gives you a solution. Okay, termination condition is satisfied, and these are the initial costs and the uh, first order uh, cost, and then this is the solution. What we're getting? Final cost to the initial cost. So it have a significant reduction in initial cost and the final cost. I'm going to plot. <clears throat> uh, this function uh, between u and y and what is the fitted curve through that model. So the data I have um, uh, based on the u and y, this is uh, the blue dot I have, and the orange curve right here is the curve produced by our model. So this is a very uh, popular use least square model and it is readily available in, in SciPy library. Uh, many of you actually, if you do experiments uh, and you're trying to fit it with the model, and you can, and doesn't matter your model is linear or nonlinear, uh, how many variables, we, uh, decision variable you have. And this is a very uh, convenient uh, library to use. And I give you the references down there and the very bottom, it is a very classic uh, prob uh, problem for many engineering application. So I'm going to conclude this uh, lecture, and so and also conclude the entire uh, nonlinear programming uh, part two.